Well, we are here at New Earth Farm in Hillsboro, Oregon, and we're going to be running some food waste scraps through the Bokashi Cycle Pulverizing Machine, which is uh, set up with a stand and a 55-gallon drum ready to fill, and uh, we're going to be backing a pickup truck loaded with a lot of the food scraps and bins that we'll be able to run through this pulverizer, which is 220-volt electric 3-horsepower motor Tico Westinghouse. Here's the truck with all the bins loaded on and we'll be backing that up and that's just exactly the right height to uh, load the bins straight in the hopper as the machine's running and uh, all of the food waste has already been powdered with the culture mix. Bokashi Cycle, and we're looking at a food waste pulverizing machine, cycling all of the food scraps and food waste. We have a machine with a 3 horsepower Tico Westinghouse motor and a chain wall that does the shredding. The food waste is broken down and pulverized as it passes through the thrashing chamber. The pulverizer is filling the 55 gallon drum directly. Here we're looking at the hopper. We've got bins of all kinds of food scraps. Some is easier material, lettuce, onions, vegetable matter. Here we've got a lot of uh, fruit scraps, pineapple tops, watermelon. Each bin holds about 450 to 500 pounds of food waste. We can forward and reverse the feeding from the hopper into the thrashing chamber. Looks like we've just about filled this barrel. We're uh, processing all of this uh, food waste at the Hillsboro New Earth Farm with Scott Olson. You can see how this uh, texture is as the material passes through the thrashing chamber and exits into the 55 gallon drum. It's already been sprinkled with the inoculant. So once it's inside, it just needs to be sealed, left alone for 10 to 14 days, and we should get a fermentation, complete end product. So we might get one more bin into the 55-gallon uh, drum. With the electric 3-horsepower uh, Tico Westinghouse, we've got a pretty quiet run on this. We get just a little bit of uh, particulate matter that sometimes escapes out of the hopper. The uh, curtains need to straighten out a little bit. Looks like we're about full here, so we'll stop for a moment and switch uh, barrels. So now we're just going to move the stand with the pulverizer after we've pushed down some of the uh, pulverized material. We'll push the stand with the machine over another barrel so we can cap and uh, set the filled barrel aside and then we'll just exchange again. There are four swivel wheels on the machine. Scott's able to push that without a whole lot of difficulty and there you can see what the pulverized food scraps look like.
if there's a large load that's not passing easily, you can just simply reverse the feeding cocks. We got a pineapple top in there, we can see that, that should get chewed up. We got some corn husks and cobs, possibly. at a close-up of the uh, material. We're going to move the uh, stand back so we can put a lid on this 55 gallon drum and with a dolly move about 500, 450 to 500 pounds of shredded waste. So we're repositioning the machine over the top of a barrel, ready to fill it. Actually, if it helps to have this. A little, move it a little bit further forward. Yeah, that might do. That might make it a little bit easier, so it doesn't stack up so heavy. Right, right at the top there. And in this particular uh, bit of pulverizing we're using the bed of the truck as the platform uh, with uh, many bins with about 50 pounds of food scraps in each of them sprinkled with the culture mix
light lettuce leaves are just hanging up on the top a little bit, but reversing the tongs or just a gentle push forward and they'll slide right in and then get delivered to the thrashing chamber.